Queen of Diamonds is a 1991 film by Nina Menkes. It follows a Las Vegas blackjack dealer drifting through her days. It played as part of the restored and rediscovered strand of Bristol Cinema Rediscovered Stop Festival. Ackerman, bullshit. That is what someone said walking out of the film. A comparison to filmmaker Shanto Ackerman is not totally unfair. Hell, a review quote on the poster to Queen of Diamonds says this and is used to market the film. And there are similarities between the two if we compare Menke's film to Ackerman's most famous Jean Diamant 23 Quai de Commerce Tenet de Brussels, which also, when it first screened, people walked out. Et que et les gens, on entendait les, les, les claquements de chaises, les fauteuils. Je me suis rendu compte que à ce moment-là que les gens ne supportaient pas quoi. This review from Tara Jude on Queen of Diamonds could easily be applied to Ackerman. Menke's films are fiercely and defiantly independent in their unwillingness to yield to mainstream aesthetics, content or form offer an alternative to this voyeuristic male world, inviting us not only to look again, but to re-examine and reframe how we are looking. The results are daring, abrasive, and quietly radical. Both films feature female subjects that force you to sit in an uncomfortable amount of real time. Les films de Chantal, à cette époque-là, c'était pas facile du tout. There was always this fight inside her. Also this trust in the frame yeah. and the time. Yeah. I just had this instinctive revulsion for a certain way of photographing women, which, uh, you know, as I learned later, could be called the male gaze. On a une, uh, le cinéma a montré une image d'une femme vue par les hommes qui est complètement fausse. The way these two films differ is about how they approach their audience. Je veux pas manipuler le spectateur. Je veux que quand il est dans le film, il vit une expérience à la fois temporelle, de temps et physique. Quand les gens ont bien aimé un film, ils disent on n'a pas senti le temps passer. Et donc, en fait, on leur a volé deux heures de leur vie. Moi, je voudrais, je j'aime que le spectateur sente en lui le temps. Le temps qui se déroule et qui soit pas volé de ces deux heures, au contraire qu'il les ait gagnés. I try to disorient the viewer in terms of where they are spatially and where they are in time, and they're pushed into the interior experience of the character, which is the perfect encapsulation of how Ackerman's representation of routine differs from Menke's. Jean Diamant is famous for its 3 hour and 20 minute runtime where the audience live out the daily routine of a domestic woman. Where for example we watch veal cutlets be prepared in a wide unbroken shot. We do get to understand the interior experience of this character too, by first seeing how her mechanisms of routine provide her shielding from her pain, only to see how once the routine gets out of place, the pain of the figurative imprisonment degradates her. We see how she becomes out of rhythm. But the protagonist of Queen of Diamonds is already syncopated. We see her job in a casino which lasts over 17 minutes. The intent is not to show time passing like how we experience it, but how it feels to work a job. The shots don't hold. Each cut goes to a new shot, the still camera moves around the table. There is no continuity between people or the blackjack games, but only to match action. With Nina Menka saying, my basic strategy was that there would never be a jump cut, it's always a smooth cut. That sense of it swirling and always repeating. Without the continuity of the games or players, there is nothing emotional or romanticised for the audience to latch onto except the prosaic process of the dealer's job. Time becomes imperceptible of how many days this represents, and the process of it is literally going in circles. We just want to escape. This form and feeling is repeated later in a wedding between an abuser and a victim, which the protagonist and us do not want to be at. 
The audience searches for our main character who keeps disappearing in the background, only for her to leave. Did you like the wedding? Not really. And for us to have to return to watch. Oh, you want to leave this fucking what wedding? What happened no, You can't leave this wedding. You're going to stay at this fucking wedding. And wow, I loved the film. I came out raving, in fraud. It's because I saw something new. In fraud, just as I was when I first saw Jean Dierman. Just as Ackerman Et was when she first saw Godard. Je n'avais jamais vu, je ne savais pas qui était Godard. Aucune idée. Je ne savais pas que le cinéma pouvait être une œuvre d'art. J'ai toujours voulu savoir ce que c'était exactement que le cinéma. A reason that some may compare these filmmakers is because of how they treated, shot and focused on female subjects. Ackerman didn't want to be labelled as a feminist filmmaker. She wished to stand on her own. But she wouldn't deny the political presence in her films. And Menkes. I never set out to be a political filmmaker, and I never set out to be a feminist filmmaker. I set out to express my inner world. And when I expressed my inner world, I noticed how political my films were. This comparison between the two filmmakers who share similarities is probably one of the reasons Ackerman rejected labels. You would not say Lav Diaz is a subpar tar, or Haneke is a subpar Bresson, or Bresson a subpar Ozu, despite similar techniques or politics. You would not compare men in a way to denigrate. Importantly, the same writer I linked Ackerman and Menkes, Berenice Renault, said, Menkes does not inscribe herself in a recognisable avant-garde tradition. She has no master and no disciples, which forces her to reinvent the history of cinema in her own terms, to struggle alone with formal and conceptual issues. One filmmaker is not better than the other. They are both sublime, both different. I don't mind returning to the screen to rediscover. Right.